Hallelujah. It's good to lean on. I said it's good to lean on Jesus. We all have to lean on someone sometime in our lives. We'll need someone to lean on. But there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Hello, somebody. Leaning on thee. Anybody tell somebody, get to lean on him. Because mm -hmm. whatever else you're leaning on that's not rooted in Christ will shift. Mm. Hallelujah. And those who expect to be held up by that leaning will fall. And that's why it says, Jesus said, those who hear these sayings of mine and what? Do them. They are what? Like to a wise man. Build his house upon the rock. That's where your house must be, church. Come on, you with me here. Hallelujah. We have Pastor Stevenson here with us. This morning he'll be bringing the word to you. And I wanted to make him welcome as he comes with the word. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. God is good. Thank you very much, Apostle Richard Fagan. Praise God. Praise God. God is good. I give thanks, you know, um, I've been doing this for over 15 years and every time I stand to declare the word, it's like a brand new experience. And I give God thanks for that. You know, um, last night I was in the kitchen washing some dishes and I was listening to that song, Draw Me Close, Closer Than Before. And while I was there meditating on the song, you know, the thought came up, the thought came up that what if you are walking in the spirit and the flesh just, just rise up? What would you do? And I believe that many persons are struggling with that. What if I commit fully to the spirit? What if I delve in without reservation? And then suddenly the flesh just comes back up and I fall back into sin. And immediately the spirit of God says, if you focus on the spirit... You won't have to worry about the flesh. Do you understand? If you are mindful of the spirit, you would never have to worry about the flesh. And I believe that many persons are struggling with that thought. They are struggling with that thought. What if I commit fully? Then something happens. And the Lord said, it is him." possible to fully commit to the spirit and be focused on the spirit be mindful of the spirit and sin it is not possible because there's no way you can be focused on God heading in the direction where light is walking in the light and fall into sin there is no sin in him. 1 John 1 verse 5 says that God is light. John says this is the message that we heard from him. Who is the him? Jesus. He said this is the message that we heard from him. That God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. So we cannot be walking in the light and sin and stumble. Jesus said in John 8 and verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever abides in me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. He will not stumble. So when you are concerned then about fully committing to God, you know, God is, a, God is jealous. God, God is jealous. The Lord said to me that true worship has a sound. True worship has a sound. And when God doesn't hear that sound, when we 
shout, when we sing, when we say praise God, then the spirit in us, the spirit of God, James says, yearns jealously for you because worship has a sound, a particular sound. And God wants to hear that sound. But there are, there are persons who are concerned then about fully committing to God. Fully immersing yourself into what God has for you. So the Lord gave me um, this thought last night. And he told me, uh, yeah, you will be speaking today. So we are right on track. Praise God. The, the, the Holy Spirit, we want to talk about the Holy Spirit, the work, nature, and power of the Holy Spirit. What are we going to talk about? The work, nature, and power of the Holy Spirit. And we are going to share some scriptures and hear what the Lord has to say on this. Because as I was there listening to the song, the Lord gave this to me. And I said, okay, I will just um, document what he is saying to me. Because when the Lord speaks, you have to be ready to take note, not just to hear but to reinforce what you're hearing by writing it down and putting it into action. Praise God. So we want to start first with the work of the Holy Spirit. And we go to John chapter 16. We start at verse 12. John chapter 16 and we start at verse 12. And Jesus says to his um, apostles, I still have things, many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. This means that Jesus did not tell his apostles everything that he wanted to tell them while he walked on earth. Do you understand? So he says, there are more things that I have to say to you, but you cannot bear them right now because they were not yet filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was with them, but not yet in them. So there are certain things that we, we cannot understand, we cannot comprehend, we cannot do without the work of the Holy Spirit. But they had Jesus with them, daily teaching them. So whatever understanding they lacked in what he said, they would go to him afterwards and say, explain to us what this means. And he would explain it to them. Do you understand? So, and he said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, there is a however. He says, when he, the spirit of truth, has come. So it's not if he's coming. He says, when he comes, as a believer, as a child of God, you must have the Holy Spirit to be a child of God. So once you're abiding in the word and living the way God says you are supposed to live, the Holy Spirit comes to you. So Jesus says, when he comes, that means you would not stay in that state of ignorance or lack for long. There is a time coming when it will be revealed to you. Because the many things that he says he has to say to them, he did not say they won't get it. He said you just cannot bear it right now. But he says they are coming. Do you understand? They are coming. So he's not leaving them and saying, okay, I have many things to say to you, but you can't bear it now. And that's it. No, he says, I'm going to reveal it to you. When the Holy Spirit comes, the Spirit of truth, He will guide you into partial truth, some truth, three quarters of the truth, all truth. He will guide you into all truth. So does, can the believer know all truth? Amen. That's what he's saying there. He will guide you into all truth. We're talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. So the Holy Spirit is listening to somebody. He is listening to somebody. Who is he listening to? Who is he listening to? He's listening to God the Father. He says, whatever he hears, he will speak. 
and he will tell you things to come. So he's listening to God. He's not speaking of his own authority or his own volition, which means his own will. But he's listening to God. And when he hears God speaks, he releases that to you. And when you hear what he says, you release that into the environment in which you are in. This is the principle that the kingdom of God operates by. So when one speaks on their own authority, they are operating outside of the parameters of the kingdom of God. Because if you're a child of God, being led by the Holy Spirit, you do not speak what you want to speak. You speak what the Lord tells you to speak, which is what Jesus did, which is what the Holy Spirit does. So he says, he will glorify me. Who is the me there? Jesus. He will glorify me. Jesus is the one speaking. So he says, he will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said he will take of mine and declare it to you. You see, the Lord knows that without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, there are some things that we cannot bear. The natural man, as Paul says, does not understand spiritual things. That's 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. The natural man does not understand spiritual things. There are some things that we cannot bear without the Holy Spirit. There are some teachings that go beyond surface level. There are some teachings that do what? Yes, Paul... Um, why am I saying Paul? The author of Hebrews calls it solid food. Solid food. That's Hebrews 5. And we are going to look at that a little here. Hebrews 5 from verse 12 through to 14. Hebrews 5 from 12 to 14. The author says, For though by this time, so there was an expectation, by this time you ought to be teachers. So the one who is teaching them, the one who is writing them said, I had expectations for you that all I have been teaching you up until this point, because he said, though by this time you ought to be teachers. So the teaching is not just giving you information. There is something that is expected from the teaching. Do you understand? Because if there was no expectation of the teacher, which is the expectation that God wants you to fulfill, he would not say by this time. Do you understand? It's like going through college and you are doing your course and the lecturer says, you know, by this time I expect you to have mastered the course and, you know, you can sit the exam and pass it. Because when you teach and when you give out that, that word, that information, you're expecting that those whom you're teaching are grasping and understanding what you're saying to be applied at some point. Because if they're not going to apply it, then it means the teaching would have been wasted. Yeah? The teaching would have been wasted. So he's saying to, by though this time you ought to be teachers, you, you would need somebody to teach you. Again, the first principles. So it's not just to go back over the, what you have been taught. They say we have to go back from the beginning. The first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk, not solid food. Because of where they were spiritually, he says, I cannot give you certain things. Because you cannot manage it. That's why it says you need milk instead of solid food. But this was not the place that they should have been. Or else he would not have said by this time. So he was looking and expecting over three years, over two years, over one year. Based on what I'm pouring out to you, I'm expecting something from you by this time. Which is not unjust. If you plant a vineyard, and if you plant a crop, and you're expecting, if it's a short-term crop or a long-term crop, you're expecting, based on the, the, the type of crop that you have planted, you're expecting a yield of fruit at a certain time. 
So that's what he's saying. I'm expecting at this time. So by this time, you ought to be teachers. But you have come to need milk and not solid food. And then he says something um, to them in verse 13. For everyone who partakes only of milk is what? Unskilled in the word of righteousness. So he says the word is what we are talking about. Teaching the word is what we are talking about. And he says he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those who by reason of use, what they have been taught, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern good and evil. So the teaching is not just for information, people of God. There is something that God is looking for. Why he is teaching you daily the principles of the kingdom. There is an expectation and he says, by, the author said, by this time, I expected more. I expected more by this time. But you see, without the Holy Spirit, it cannot be accomplished. He speaks to those who do not have the Spirit, Holy Spirit, but he does so by giving them as much as they can bear, especially those who are outside. So God is speaking to everybody. Yesterday we were here, Apostle was teaching, a man walked in and he was making some noise and Apostle spoke to him and he came, dropped an offering, which was not really an offering, I don't know what he was doing. But he did that and then he sat down. Apostle was teaching on John 8, at the point where Jesus said, you do not hear me because you are not of God. And the man got up and walked out and said, I don't need to listen to this man. And then at that point the Lord said to me, you know, it's a, it's, it, we should not take it for granted. We should not take it lightly that we can sit and hear the word of God. We should not take it lightly that we can sit or we have the capacity to listen to what God is saying. Because other people are hearing God speak but are not sitting down to listen to what he's saying. When the, when the hearses were passing, we all heard the sound. You understand? We all heard the sound, but we are not listening or focusing on them. God is speaking. God is speaking. What may be known of God is, is revealed to them. You don't believe me? Check Romans 1. Romans 1, we're going to go to Romans 1, and we're going to read from 18 to about 21. Romans chapter 1. He says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Against what? All ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. And what do they do? They suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So they hear God speaking and they hear the truth, but they suppress it and continue doing their own way. You see what he's saying there? They suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has what? Shown it to them. But yet they are still sons of disobedience. So God is speaking to the sons of disobedience. Why are they called sons of disobedience? Because they are not obeying God. Because he's speaking to them and they are not obeying him. He says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Do you get that? The invisible attributes are clearly seen. It's not that we see the invisible, but we see what is visible and know that it came from what is invisible. That's what he's saying. That things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. So what? So that they are without excuse. So they cannot say they did not hear. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened because they did not walk in the light of God's word. So God is still speaking to them. 
Jesus spoke to those who, who were outsiders. He spoke to them in parables. And they did not take the time to find out what the par parables meant. They walked away. Some came for, for the fish and bread. Some came for healing. Some came because, hey, this man is famous. His fame went throughout all cities of Judea, the Decapolis and Jerusalem and all of that. So they came because they wanted something, whether it was healing, whether it was food, whatever he, he had, they came for that. But they did not stop to inquire about the message of the kingdom. And so in Mark, Mark 4, Mark 4, 33 to 34, he says, and with many, Mark 4, yes, thank you. And with many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear. But without a parable, he did not speak to them. And when they were alone, he explained all things to his disciples. Remember, at this point, the disciples did not yet have the Holy Spirit. So he still had to go through and explain certain things to them. But those who were not interested, they walked away. Uh, we, we got what we want. We got the healing. We got fish and bread. We heard something, nice teaching, and they walked away. But they did not stay to hear. That's why Jesus spoke to them in parables. They were carnal-minded. They don't, they don't understand spiritual things. It is the Spirit of God that gives us understanding in the word and revelation of Christ and the revelation of Christ bringing us into the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2. We're going to go back to 1 Corinthians 2 from 9 to 16 and hear what Paul is saying there about having the mind of Christ and we have the mind of Christ through the Spirit of God. He says, but I, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Now many persons will say, they just read that passage and say, yes, we cannot know the things that God has for us. But Paul did not stop there. There is a but. He said, but God has revealed them to us through the Spirit. So without the Spirit of God, we would not understand the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Do you see that? He said, but God has revealed them to us. To us who? To us who? I'm hearing mumbling. I'm not hearing the answer. To us who? Yes, man. Talk up, man. Praise God. He said, but God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit does what? Searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Remember we talk about going beyond surface level? Yes, man, the deep things of God. So when you get the Holy Spirit, it's not just to clap hands and sing and feel and speak in tongues and jump and speed and shout hallelujah. We get the Spirit to reveal the deep things of God. That means we go beyond milk stage, move on to solid food. Yes, man, God wants to reveal some of that. So he says, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. That's why he said, it has not entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store. Because man cannot know them without the spirit of God. Verse 12, no we have received, have we received? Yes, no we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. And what, what have we received them to do? That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So we receive the Holy Spirit so we can know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Do you see that? Praise God. So he says, these things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. It is the Holy Spirit teaching you these things. 
It is the Holy Spirit bringing this awareness to you right now. So he said, we teach these things not with man's wisdom. Because man's wisdom says nobody can be perfect. Man's wisdom says once you're in this world, you're going to sin. Man's wisdom said all sorts of foolishness. That's why we're not teaching by man's wisdom. We're teaching by the wisdom of God, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Then he says, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Why? See, they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual, verse 15 says, judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. And some persons may think it's arrogant for, something to say, for somebody to say, you can't judge me. I, when, they, when we claim that verse and say he's not rightly, he's rightly judged by no one, they say like, who are you? We can judge. No, but he's saying, listen to what he's saying. If you are walking in the spirit and you're filled with the spirit of God, who is going to judge God? Who is going to judge God? No one can judge God. That's what he's saying. He's rightly judged by no one. Who is going to say you're at fault? Who is going to say you have sinned? Who is going to say you're wrong? Because saying that would be saying God is wrong because there's a spirit of God leading you. That's what he's saying. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we, we have the mind of Christ. So he says, this mind of Christ is through the Spirit of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Jesus would often explain what he spoke to his disciples because they stayed and they inquired more of what he said. When someone is filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't have to be explaining things over and over and over and over and over and over to them. There are points where you can reiterate and refresh. But if we have to be explaining one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, every single time that we see you, it means that something is wrong. Do you understand? So he says, when you have the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God who is truth, living in you, when you hear truth, there's a connection. There's a cohesion. There's a meshing. There's no resistance. Do you understand? So that's what he's saying. You, you cannot fight against it. That means if you are wrestling against truth, we know that there's another spirit operating in you. Do you understand? That's what Jesus said. Why don't you understand my speech? And he didn't stop to ask them why. He says, telling them, because my word has no place in you. Because you are children of the devil. So it's not a question where he wanted to know the answer. It's a rhetorical question where the answer has already been shown by their response. Do you understand? So truth doesn't fight against truth. The Holy Spirit doesn't fight against himself. Christ is not divided. So when we speak truth, when we hear truth and, and somebody says, but, but, we start to get some question marks start to pop up. Who else is talking with you? Who else is whispering in your ears? That's the thing, that's the thing, you know. It doesn't matter what happens. When I come, if I, if I talk with Apostle privately, or he says it publicly, when he declares the truth, I accept it. And even if it pains me, he can tell you. Even if it pains me, yes, Lord, I want the heart, but yes, it's the truth. And I'm not going to fight against truth. Because Jesus told Paul, you cannot kick against the goads and win. You're only going to damage yourself. Yeah? You're only going to damage yourself, man. So, so we need to understand that when the spirit of truth is speaking, those who are of truth will agree with those who are of truth. 
Isn't that what, what John said in 1 John 4 verse 6? He says, we are of God, little children. First, yes, thank you. He says, we are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God, do they hear us? No, they do not hear us. So he said, by this we know. John is saying, those of us who are walking in truth, by this, this is the acid test. This is the proof. This is the confirmation. This is the conclusion we come to. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So you cannot be walking in truth and when truth is being declared to you, no, but I see it this way and no, that's, that's not the spirit of truth. Some other spirit is whispering there. And that is, what, that is why God has given us the sword of the spirit because some things need to be cut off in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Yes, man, this is not something we jump up and hey, but it's something we receive in the spirit, yeah? Praise God. God is good. Yes, yeah, so we, 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 that, that was the work, that is the work of the Spirit. Now we're going to talk about the nature of the Spirit. The what? The nature of the Spirit. When you focus to, be, to meditate or to be mindful of, when you focus on the Holy Spirit, you won't have to worry about the flesh. You won't, simple terms, baby stuff. If you're heading in this direction, there's no way you can go that back there. You get what I'm saying? If you are heading and you're focused on heading in that direction, there's no way you can be going in that direction and be walking in the opposite direction. Do you understand? Yes. So simple terms. You cannot be focused on the spirit and, and walk in the flesh. It is not possible. But if you say you are, and yet we find that you're walking in the flesh, John says you are lying and you, haven't, you are not practicing the truth. Yeah, 1 John, 1, 1 John 1 verse 6, he says, If we say that we have light yet walk in darkness, we do not practice the truth. See, there it is. If we say we have fellowship, sorry, fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Because we are saying that we are headed in this direction, but our, our works and our actions are proving that we are going in that direction, which is it's not possible. So he says, when you are focused on the Spirit, you don't have to worry about the flesh. The nature of the Holy Spirit is, the, is one that if you are constantly mindful of him and his leadership in your life, the flesh will never, never have any say over you ever again. That is the point where I started and that is the point that God wants to, to um, bring home to us today. Because as I started, I said, the people are worried. What if I commit fully? to this ministry? What if I commit fully to what God is doing? What if I throw myself in without reservation? What will happen? Will I draw back? And God is saying, it is not possible. It is not possible. Jesus, or Paul, well, Jesus is still speaking through Paul. Paul said in Romans 8, Romans 8, Reading from verse 12 to verse 13. Romans 8 from verse 12. It says, Therefore, brethren, we are, not, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will live. If you, if you, how are you going to put to death the deeds of the flesh? By the Spirit. So it is the Spirit of God, you allowing Him to work, put to death the deeds of the body. And He says, you will live. He says the way to kill the flesh, the nature, the sinful passions and desires is by the Spirit. 
This means following the way of the Spirit. In doing this, the flesh cannot lead you. When you do this, the flesh cannot lead you. And, and let's look at this also in Galatians 5. Galatians 5 from verse 13 to 26. Galatians 5 from verse 13 to 26. He says, Paul says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. What have you been called to? What have you been called to? Yes, he said, only do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. Don't use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. But through love, serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. What next does he say? I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. Do you see that? So once you are walking in the spirit, he says there's no way you can fulfill the loss of the flesh. Uh, because he said there's a war going on between the flesh and the spirit. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary one to the other so that you you the person do not do the things that you wish when you tell persons this that they do not do what they want to do no it's my life i made the decision i made a choice yeah it's not you sorry to burst your bubble but it's not you there's no there's no middle ground there's no Shade in between is either God or the devil. Sorry to burst the bubble, but that's what he's saying. You do not do the things you wish. You are either following the spirit of God and the spirit of the devil. But, but pastor, no, no, but the word of God says it. I didn't say it. I had to conform to this. I had to agree with it because there are times where, yeah, it's my decision. I made the decision. But then the Lord said, no, you either obey God or you obey the devil. You don't get to do what you want to do. None of us gets to do what we want to do. None of us. And I want you to understand that. None of us gets to do what we want to do. He says, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, no works, you know, revelries, and the like. There's more. Paul says, Paul didn't even go to list out everything. He says, there's more and the like, anything like this, because lying is not there. And so many others are not there, but he says, anything and the like. He says, which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You see that there? He said, you will not inherit the kingdom of God if you practice those things. But how do we inherit the kingdom of God? He says, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And he says, against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have what? Crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. 25, 26. And he says, if we, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So he says, not just to say you are in the spirit, but you must also walk in the spirit. Do you see that there? Praise God. So he's saying that's the nature of the Holy Spirit. This is how we put the flesh to death. 
And so the third point I want to share um, with you today is the power of the Holy Spirit. The what? The power of the Holy Spirit. And we go to Romans 8. Romans 8 from 1 to 2. We're going to read more passages in there, but let's start at 1 and 2. Romans 8, 1 and 2, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And there are further stipulations. It says, Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So there is no condemnation for those who are walking according to the Spirit. Do you see that? It says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So Paul is saying here, this is what set me free from sin. Do you see that? And so, you know, um, the law of the spirit, the natural way the spirit operates, the law of the spirit, that's what we call the law of the spirit, the natural way the spirit operates. Operating in the law of the spirit is following the natural way of how the spirit of Christ operates. And that's what sets us free from sin. Do you understand? The way of the spirit is in all goodness and truth Ephesians 5 Ephesians 5 verse 8 to 10 Ephesians 5 verse 8 to 10 he says for you were once darkness but now you are light in the Lord walk as children of light for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness righteousness and truth Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. So he says, no, the, the way of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. The Spirit is the Spirit of truth. The Spirit is the one that gives life. But let me just share something that the Lord brought to my attention some, some months ago about the law of the Spirit. You see, the, 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 we have laws in nature, Right? We have laws in nature. And let's use two, um, two laws that we can think about. The law of gravity. The law of gravity basically says anything that goes up must come down. Science people, am I correct? Thank you. Good. All right. So anything that goes up must come down. Right? So then how do aeroplanes fly? How do aeroplanes fly? How do they get the plane, that heavy machinery? It's not made of paper, it's made of iron. So how do they get it to fly and stay in the air and control it in the air from lifting to landing? It's called the law of aerodynamics, right? Now, when, when we look at the law of gravity, gravity tells us that everything that goes up must come down. So the law of aerodynamics is higher than the law of gravity. Do you understand? The law of aerodynamics is higher than the law of gravity. So the law of aerodynamics is above the law of gravity that defies it and goes up and says, this law keeps the, the, the plane in the air. The law of the spirit the law of the spirit and the law of the sinful nature works it's in similarity. The law of gravity is like the law of the sinful nature. You're always going to sin while you have the sinful nature. So that's why there are persons who are trying to live the life. But every time they try without the spirit, they fail. Because you cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. Do you follow? All right. But then when the law of the spirit comes, that's what Paul said, the law of the spirit has set me free from the law of sin and death. So the law of the spirit is above the law of the sinful nature. Do you understand? 
And the thing that the Lord revealed to me through an article that I read, it says that the law of aerodynamics was always there. It was all, it's not something that man invented, it's something that God made. It was always there, but man did not know how to apply that law until it was revealed to him. And then he says, the law of the spirit was always there. Because the spirit of God is eternal. Do you understand? So the law of the spirit is, was always there. But man did not know how to operate in that because the spirit of God had not yet come. Because Jesus had not yet been glorified. So when Jesus came, lived here on earth, taught, and then he, as he died, he suffered, died, rose again, and ascended, then the spirit was released in his fullness and, and to dwell in man. But the Spirit of God was always working. The law of the Spirit was always working. But it's that man did not yet have the Spirit living in them. So that's what Paul says. Just like the law of aerodynamics is above the law of gravity that keeps the plane up there. He says when you apply the law of the Spirit in your life, it keeps you above sin. That's why John says, whosoever is born of God does not sin and he cannot sin. Because he has been born of God. Because of the law of the spirit. So when you are operating in the spirit. Paul said it sets you free. From the law of sin and death. That's why he says if any man. If you go down to verse 9. He says if any man does not have the spirit of Christ. He's none of his. Because he says you are not in the flesh for the flesh to be leading you. You are in the spirit if indeed there is a condition. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. So if a believer, and this is something that I had to accept and conform to as a child of God. If a believer says, you know, I have the spirit of God, but I still sin. Is he a believer? Yeah, he can't believe. Do you know, born again. Because many Jews believed on Jesus, but they were not born again. When Jesus started teaching, they walked away. Some cursed and some said some things, and he said to them, oh, you are children of the devil. So they can believe. But to be born again is going more further than just believing. Yeah? So believers will tell you, some believers will tell you, because we're all believers. We're all believers, right? But they are believers who are born again. Do you understand? Yes. So some believe, but they, have not made, they are not born again. But it says, when you are born again, you are operating in the law of the spirit. And this is not something that you just get up and say, yes, I'm born again, I'm a child of God. No. John, John um, threw that out the door a long time in John, St. John chapter 1, verse 12. St. John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. He says, well, start at verse 11. He says, he came, in, he came to his own. His own did not receive him, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become. If he says the right to become, it means that they are not yet. Do you understand? The right to become children of God. So they have the right to become because they received him. And that is a shocker to the church. Not everyone who received Christ is a child of God. No, you see, these things, that's why I say Solid food belongs to those who are mature either. Because there are some grandmothers and grandfathers in church, you could never go to them and tell them, 40, 50 years, you're not a child of God yet. How dare you, young man? Who are you? Before you were born, I was sweeping church, I was traveling, I was preaching. Yes, mommy, you're not born again. You're not, born again. You're not ready yet. 
Because he says you can receive him, you can get the right to become and still not have him and still not have it. Do you see that? Yeah, you don't use the right to those who believe in his name. He says, who were born. Now here's what John says, who were born. They were born, right? Not of blood, not of the will of the flesh. So it's not because your mother was a Christian or a child of God. You were born from a mother, make you a child of God or your father. No. So, that, so he eliminates blood. Not of the will of the flesh. Okay, let's have a child of God. Let's, let's give birth to a child of God. Yeah? Husband said to the wife, let's give birth to a child of... No, that's not it. Not of the will of man. Oh, I am a child of God. I determined. I want to be. I am a... No, that's not how it works. He said, but of God. God is the one who, who makes you born again. He is the one through the word and the spirit. When you receive the word and you receive the spirit, he says, no, you are a child of God. So, so the Lord wants us to understand that the, the Holy Spirit, his work, his nature, and his power operating in us, we have everything that we need for life and godliness. Everything that we need. His divine power. I believe that's um, 2 Peter 1 verse 3. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 where Peter says, as his divine power has given us everything that we need for life and godliness through so the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Verse 4, by which have been given to us exceedingly great. So it's not just great, but it's exceedingly great and precious promises that through these things we may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. So because we, we have received these precious promises, because we are partakers of his divine nature, we have escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. So we, we are not corrupted by what is going on in the world. It's the Holy Spirit insulates us. If you understand that term, he insulates us. I don't know if you've seen the movie, movie Bubble Boy. Everybody should have seen that movie, except those who were born after the 2000s. Probably they have not seen it. But uh, Bubble Boy, he was in this bubble, and everywhere he went, he was locked in a house in a bubble. If he was going out, he was going out in a bubble. It's something similar to that. The Holy Spirit insulates us. He's in us, but he insulates us and keeps us. That's why Paul says, you, you were given, he were given the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. He keeps you, he fills you, he washes you, he guides you in truth. So uh, when you abide in him, you are free from all of these things. Do you see that? Praise God. So that's what he wants us to understand. So, so God is saying, you don't have to be afraid. You, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid of committing fully to the Lord. Because as, as he said in John 16 verse 12, I still have many things to say to you. I still have many things to say to you. And Jesus is saying that no. But some people cannot bear it. Some people cannot bear it. Because, you know, some, some said to him, this teaching is too hard. Who can understand it? Some people cannot bear it. But the disciples understood it. The disciples stayed with him. That's in St. John 6, verse 60. Many of his disciples complained. Yeah. And they heard this. They said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? But were they right? They're saying, by what they're saying, is nobody can understand this teaching. But that's not true. If we go down further to 60, 68 and 69, we start from 67 when Jesus, when they left, some of them left, they walked away from him. Verse 66 says, um, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. 
Jesus did explain to them why he said, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. He wasn't telling them to be cannibals, to eat his physical flesh. He was telling them, if you, if you take the words that I'm giving you, because he said in verse 63 of the same passage, he says, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. But they still didn't understand. And they left him. And he said to the twelve, do you also want to go? And, and then Peter said to him, Lord, to whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, in addition to that, we have come to believe and know. So it's not just to believe. There's a point when you move from believing to knowing. We have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Right, stand to your feet. We're going to pray. But um, th this song, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if the praise team knows this song, where it says, um, walk on through the door, hear the Spirit calling. Do we know that one? A new and fresh anointing. Hear the Spirit calling. Walk on through the door. It's an invitation. Yeah? It's an invitation. It's an invitation to God is given to say, you know, I want, I want to do more in and through you. I want to do more in and through you. So if you hear him speaking to you, if you hear him calling you and saying, walk through that door, commit everything to me. Do not, do not ignore his voice. Because the Spirit of God is yearning jealously for you. He wants more. Yeah? He wants more. Beyond the open door there's a new and fresh anointing. Hear the Spirit calling you to go. Walk on through the door and the Lord will go before you into a grave. Power. You want that power. You've never known. That power is available. It's available to you. Beyond the open door, there's a new and fresh anointing. It's an invitation. Hear the Spirit calling. The Spirit of God is calling you. Just a minute, just a minute, you know, there, there are some things that are coming that you have, you have not seen, the likes of which you have not seen. And God is saying, if you are not fully equipped, there will be casualties. And he's saying, I want to give you power. I want to give you power so that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because in your flesh, in your own strength, you cannot stand up against it. So he's saying, I'm telling you this because I want to equip you for what is coming. I cannot give you the details of what is coming against you, but I know who is going to bring it. And I know it's the devil. And I cannot tell you when it's going to come. But I know he's coming. Because he's not giving up. But God is saying, listen. <laughs> I am here. 
I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. It's not just getting the teachings. It's being empowered to do what the teachings require of us to do. I say it to you as much as I said it, say it to me. And I had that conversation with the Lord last night. I said, Lord, you give me this word. I must apply it to my life and do it and live it. So I'm, I'm talking to you as much as I'm talking to me and even more so myself. Because if it's one thing I know, until Jesus Christ puts an end to the devil, he will not stop. And so if we are not completely immersed in the spirit, hallelujah, the devil is going to have a field day. Then you wonder why so many things are happening. It's like hell broke loose. But he's saying, I can spare you. I can spare you damages. I can spare you be becoming a casualty. Walk on through the door. Hear the Spirit calling for you to go through the open door into a greater power. A greater power that you have never known. And he says that power is available to you. Jesus said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you and you will be my witnesses. Hallelujah. If you want that power is available to you right now. Walk on through the door. He's calling you. Into a It's a personal invitation. You have to know what the Lord is saying to you. You have to know what he's saying to you. And you have to receive it in your spirit. And say, yes, Lord. I hear you. And I want this. We cannot do it for you. You have to make that personal decision, that choice, that commitment. The flesh profits nothing. It is the spirit who gives life. Let's do that one more time. Just lift those hands and I hear the Spirit saying, Lord, I'm available to you. I'll do what you want me to do. Just lift your hands and meditate on what He's saying to you. And whatever the Lord says, whatever He does, He is right. Whatever he says, whatever he does, he is right. He just needs your cooperation. 
your willingness, your obedience. And say, Lord, I'm available to you. Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Cry out to him. Use me, Lord. said, Lord, if your presence does not go with me, I won't go. We won't go up if your presence does not go with us. And that should be the cry of our hearts now. Whatever you want to do, whatever the Lord has laid on your heart, whatever your plans, your aspirations, your goals, your ambitions, Turn it over to God. Turn it over to God. He wants to hear you. You are before the presence of the King. Open your mouth and speak to Him. Talk with Him. He wants to hear you. And He wants to impart some things to you. He wants to pour into you. Hallelujah. He wants to do something. Hallelujah. Shift some things in place. All that the devil has been lurking and frustrating and coming at you with is to distract you. He wants to distract you from what God is doing. But right now, the Lord is saying his works are reduced to ashes right now in the name of Jesus. And the path is clear. Make your request to the king. He has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. The anointing of God is being poured out on you right now. And the king, hallelujah, you are before the king. Make your petitions to him. Tell him that you are available. Tell him that you are ready. Hallelujah. There's a cleansing. There's a great anointing that is waiting for you. Walk on through the door. 
Yes. This is no time to be silent. This is no time to be silent. Cry out to him. You are going to need this that you are getting today. You are going to need it. You are going to need it. You are going to need it. Take in as much as he's given to you. Open up and take in as much as he's given to you. Because you are going to need this anointing. You are going to need this grace. Yes, hallelujah. He sees what is coming. He sees what is coming. The devil is coming against your children. And your marriage. And your health. And your relationship. But God said, this anointing that I'm releasing to you today. He's crowning you. 
yes everlasting joy and peace robe of righteousness yes hallelujah mm. yes thank you Jesus thank you Jesus yes Lord an unnatural flow of blood from somebody the Lord is saying I'm healing that right now that unnatural flow that consistent flow that goes beyond its time I command you to cease right now dry up in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Yes. The name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Walk in the spirit, stay in the spirit, allow God to lead you and direct you. You will never be the same again. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Let's praise the Lord. be seated praise God praise God stay in that stay in the spirit allow God to continue to lead you and you will see great things come on give God thanks to Pastor Stevenson hallelujah our God is awesome if we abide in him there is no sin the reason being he's saying to you that the devil will keep on trying until he's cut off. And he, but all he try, he try, if you abide in God, you cannot sin. Come on. But if you break that fellowship with him, come on, the devil will come in. Huh? Praise God. So abide in him. Abide in him. Praise God. What a sweet fellowship we have in him. What a wonderful thing to be free from sin and of Christ within. To be made a joint ear 
with Jesus my Lord what a wonderful uh, hallelujah and he wants us to become the righteousness of God in him so we encourage you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might praise God and while you're sowing we just give the last word to those who are watching online those who are watching online and watching increasing faith deliverance ministry here at 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom today. You heard the gospel declared by Pastor Alton Stevenson. And we believe the word was accurately declared to you. And if you mix the word with faith, it will produce fruit in your life. And not just for a season, but fruit that remains. Amen. The victory you have in the Lord doesn't have to be temporary it can be permanent hallelujah but you must abide in him to have continuous victory because the word declares that the father the god of our lord jesus christ always leads us into triumph always not sometimes always leads us into triumph and it says everywhere we go we are releasing diffusing the fragrance of the knowledge of Christ come on so we know if you abide in him that will be your testimony and others will see and glorify your father which is in heaven amen the father doesn't get glory out of us sinning the father gets glory out of our obedience hallelujah and obedience to God does not produce sin it produces the righteousness of God in Christ amen that's about the kingdom so we have a book released out there it's on amazon.com released it last year and as you can go on amazon.com type in the search box richard v fig and the book will come up you can order it anywhere around the world the name of the book is the gospel of christ subtitled the gospel that jesus preach the gospel that jesus preached and that's the gospel of the kingdom hallelujah you can read about it in matthew 4 verse 23 and in matthew 9 verse 35 everywhere went that was what he was preaching and 39 parables he spoke concerning the gospel and all of them was about the gospel of the kingdom and so we want you to get into the word come on and understand what the will of the lord is and walk in it that you can reap your just reward in him amen praise god so if you want to get more of the teachings we have more teachings here than what is in the book of course we declare this word for over 20 years and god is still blessing us with more revelation and depth in the word so we wanted to stream connect with our live stream on facebook we plugged into the live stream we have five live stream services per week and also we have edited and put more scripture on the youtube version so you can look at youtube for pastor richard fagan and you will see we added more scripture for you can have a more solid confidence to defend your faith in the lord amen and also we have also have some other teachings that are not live streamed that are in-house teaching six services of teaching each week and that is placed in what we call our daily devotional if you want to have it it's like a daily bread you can use it to teach your children at home at a staff meeting at a devotion and just to edify yourself it is free you just request it through the number on the screen and i'll send it to you by whatsapp and you can read it on your device with or without internet it's very small in the memory base of it therefore it can hold on your device and still leave much room for other things hallelujah will it be a good read for you to build your most holy faith in the lord and to anchor your walk with him that you reap your eternal reward in him amen praise god you want to know more about the ministry check out our website it's increasing faith intl.org that's increasing faith intl.org those who have been ministered to by this ministry and really enjoy the ministry of the word through this ministry, you're free to sow to the ministry through the website. All the information and options are there for you. Any further question, you can call me, Richard Fagan, at 876-839-9390 or 
2427 looking forward to hear from you and to build your most holy faith in the lord all the information is on the screen until next time be strong in the lord in the power of his might you blessed today oh my god i'm truly blessed praise god blessing overflow praise god and so it's good to be in the house and hear people not just listening but people receiving and able to pour back into god's people and i believe more will rise up to do the same as the word declare we are not teaching you just to be taught but that you also will be able to teach others what you have been taught amen and that's where the the, the kingdom manifests hallelujah that a wheat of grain is sown but it's not only a wheat of grain that is produced it produces a harvest of grain huh? which is good so each one teach one then will multiply huh so we don't expect just to stay puny money eh? not so kingdom of god speaks of expansion and of growth and of increase and people of god must be very active in the word and in the spirit to do so amen for it says any branch in me that does not bear fruit my father takes away if it's not producing he will remove it come on so get on board with being a part of the production in the kingdom of God amen don't be as uh, an observer huh? a spectator be a participant in the work of the ministry amen and ensure that you are not just ministering to people but you have received the word to minister to yourself lest when you point others in you be left out got it Praise God. So we encourage you to know the truth. Ah, you've been blessed by the word. Praise God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And give you his peace. God bless you. Good. Have a great week in the Lord. Love and bless you all. In Jesus name.